Pastor Don. Welcome to worship with the community of South Cuban Community Church. We're so glad that you've decided to join us for worship today for the week of Sunday, August the 1st, 2021. I can't believe that it's already August and here we are. Today's service might be a little bit challenging for some. It's meant to be, it's meant to be challenging. It's meant to be um, an opportunity for reflection and uh, to, to make you think. Let's worship. being and our becoming, that which is sacred within, among, and beyond us. We know so many stories about you, God, Lord, King, Father, Earth Mother, Great Spirit, Universe, Holy Parent, Divine Love, Deepest Longings, Covenanted Partner. stories about our country and its founding too, of the values we claim as a people. We have stories about those narratives, about how our values have and have not manifested in our reality. Blessed One, we also know so many stories about ourselves, some of them the same stories we tell about others, beautiful, ugly, simple, difficult, joyous, useful, worthless. Stories about who we are, what we know, and the potentials and impossibilities of our future. Stories about our purpose and the meaning of our lives. We have countless stories buried too deep in our souls for us to even recognize them. Discovery, help us to find the strength to excavate those buried stories. Let us lean on one another as we brush them off, hold them up to the light, and find their meaning and use. May our roots nourish us so that we might grow abundantly and flower into blessings for one another and the world. Above all, Holy Parent, sing us a gentle lullaby. In the trees and the wind, in the kind words of our neighbors, in the warmth of the sun and the sparkle of the snow, whisper to us the truest story you know, and sing it to us in notes we can never unhear. Remind us every day, every moment, that we are beloved, Beloved, beloved. Amen.
this time, I would like to share a letter with you written by the moderator of the United Church of Canada, the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Bott. To residential school survivors, families, and communities, I want to acknowledge the pain that you as survivors of residential schools, families, and communities are experiencing. We understand that the pain endured at these schools went far beyond their walls and grounds into community and through generations. The United Church of Canada operated 15 residential schools, Alberni, Ahusik, Kokolitsa, Kitimat, Elizabeth Long Memorial Home, and Port Simpson, Crosby Boys and Girls Home in BC. Edmonton, McDougall Orphanage slash Morley and Red Deer in Alberta. Coat, for, formerly Crow Stand, File Hills and Round Lake in Saskatchewan. Brandon, Norway House and Portage La Prairie in Manitoba and Mount Elgin in Ontario. We are aware of cemeteries on some of these sites and we know that there are also unmarked and likely undocumented graves of children. We acknowledge that our role in the residential school system and colonization is an abuse of power through our Christian faith. We hope that our ongoing work for reconciliation, which has been guided by United Church residential school survivors, more truly reflects what our faith calls us to do and be. We are committed to the calls of action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission especially those directed to us as perpetrators. These include those related to burial sites and missing children. In the spirit of truth telling and transparency, we want to share the work that we have done in consultation with community on identifying and restoring graveyards. The United Church in Southwestern Manitoba has actively supported ongoing work on the identification and preservation of grave sites related to the residential school in Brandon. This includes the 104 graves identified off-site in 2018. In Saskatchewan, we supported the community of Okanese in preserving its graveyard and honoring the children buried there. The United Church of Canada has also been a partner in the preservation of the Regina Industrial School Cemetery. Regina was operated by the Presbyterian Church, but the United Church shares responsibility. The United Churches in Red Deer, Alberta, work to preserve the residential school cemetery in cooperation with the communities who sent children, whose children were sent to Red Deer. There has also been research into possible graves at the Edmonton Residential School. This work is just a beginning, and we understand that it must continue. Steps are required to properly locate, identify, and honour these children, and for the truth that Indigenous people have always known to finally be heard. Any work we do to help search grounds of and surrounding the United Church residential schools must be done with respect for the consent of and with the guidance of Indigenous leadership, communities, survivors, and families. We know that we are not the experts in this work. We will continue to share all the documents and knowledge we have. If anyone in community wishes to share information and expertise with us, we will gratefully accept it and be committed to transparency. We are committed to meeting with leadership to hear how they wish to proceed and whether they would like our assistance at any stage. This includes financial assistance for what community leadership deems appropriate. The United Church of Canada is committed to reconciliation and to transparency in our efforts to support Indigenous leadership communities, survivors, and families in bringing these children the honor we deny them in life. With respect, the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Bott, moderator of the United Church of Canada.
Today's story is called Entango Mates 3 by Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell. In the middle of New York City, there is a great big park called Central Park. Children love to play there. It has a toy boat pond where they can sail their boats. It has a carousel to ride on in the summer and an ice rink to skate on in the winter. Best of all, it has its very own zoo. Every day, families of all kinds go to visit the animals that live there. But children and their parents aren't the only families at the zoo. The animals make families of their own. There are red panda bear families with mothers and fathers and furry red panda bear cubs. There are monkey dads and monkey moms raising noisy monkey babies. There are toad families and toucan families and cotton top tamarind families too. And in the penguin house, there are penguin families. Every year, at the very same time, the girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. Two penguins in the penguin house were a little bit different. One was named Roy and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. They bowed to each other and walked together. They sang to each other and swam together. Wherever Roy went, Silo went too. They didn't spend much time with the girl penguins and the girl penguins didn't spend much time with them. Instead, Roy and Silo wound their necks around each other. Their keeper, Mr. Gramsay, noticed the two penguins and thought to himself, they must be in love. Roy and Silo watched how the other penguins made a home. So they built a nest of stones for themselves. Every night, Roy and Silo slept there together, just like the other penguin couples. And every morning, Roy and Silo woke up together. But one day, Roy and Silo saw that the other couples could do something they could not. The mama penguin would lay an egg. She and the papa penguin would take turns keeping the egg warm until finally it would hatch. And then there would be a baby penguin. Roy and Silo had no egg to sit on and keep warm. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. One day, Roy found something that looked like what the other penguins were hatching, and he brought it to their nest. It was only a rock, but Silo carefully sat on it and sat. and sat. When Silo got sleepy, he slept. And when Silo was done sleeping and sitting, he swam and Roy sat. Day after day, Silo and Roy sat on the rock, but nothing happened. Then Mr. Gramsci got an idea. He found an egg that needed to be cared for and he brought it to Roy and Silo's nest. Roy and Silo knew just what to do. They moved the egg to the center of their nest. Every day they turned it so each side stayed warm. Some days Roy sat when Silo went for food. Other days it was Silo's turn to take care of their egg. They sat in the morning and they sat at night. They sat through lunchtime and swim time and supper. They sat at the beginning of the month and they sat at the end of the month and they sat all the days in between. 
until one day they heard a sound coming from inside their egg. Peep, 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 it said. Roy and Silo called back, squawk, squawk. Peep, peep, answered the egg. Suddenly, a tiny hole appeared in the egg shell. And then, crack. Out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsay decided, because it takes two to make a tango. Roy and Silo taught Tango how to sing for them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks. They snuggled her in their nest at night. Tango was the very first penguin in the zoo to have two daddies. Soon Tango grew strong enough to leave the nest. Roy and Silo took her for a swim just like all the other penguin families. And all the children who came to the zoo could see Tango and her two fathers playing in the penguin house with the other penguins. Hooray, Roy! Hooray, Silo! Welcome, Tango, they cheered. At night, the three penguins returned to their nest. There they snuggled together, and like all the other penguins in the penguin house, and all the other animals in the zoo, and all the families in the big city around them, they went to sleep. The end. I began this summer using children's storybooks as a way to reinforce, to simplify, connect, remind, to help us to hear a different perspective. Today we've heard two possibly challenging stories. The first, a letter from the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Bott talking about the United Church run residential schools. It's a hard story to hear. A story that might be easier for some if left unread, unheard, unacknowledged. Unfortunately, the story of residential schools has remained silence and walked away for far too long. Remember that lesson when we were little that the truth always comes out? Finally, the truth is surfacing and it's a hard story to hear. It's a story of our past. A tragic, heart-wrenching story that is almost too much to bear, but we must. We must open our hearts, our minds, our lives to God just as we sang earlier to the pain, to disbelief, to anger, and eventually to forgiveness and healing. In the story Untango Makes Three, we open our hearts and minds to love, to acceptance, to another true story. Roy and Silo really are chinstrap penguins living in Central Park Zoo, who became a couple in 1998 and were given the opportunity to care for an egg in 2000, which eventually hatched and became known as Tango the Penguin. Their story is a story about love, about family, and a reminder that families come in all shapes and sizes. Stories have been used for centuries to teach us things. Jesus himself was the ultimate storyteller. He'd say something like, hey, have you heard the one about, and then tell a parable. Stories were the way he reached the people to convey the message he needed them to honor, claim, and synthesize. We learn from the Bible that Jesus spoke to the people using story as the vehicle for connection because it fulfilled what God said I will speak to you in parables. I will explain things hidden since the creation of the world. The people called it wisdom. 
That is still true today. Often people gravitate to stories with happy endings or tales about everyday people. But even unpleasant stories can be a powerful way to convey a message. The story of Tango certainly has a happy ending and is a stark contrast to the devastation in the story of residential schools in Canada. Both stories convey an important message. Stories give us power. They give us wisdom. They give us opportunities to learn and to grow and to become better than we were before. Today, I give thanks to God for stories. Let's pray. Holy God, you spoke the world into being, telling a story of life and hope and love. Still you speak, creating with your word, calling forth light from darkness. You fill the earth with your glory, visible to anyone who looks for you. Give us eyes to see. We give you thanks for you are faithful, you have promised your presence and your love never fails. Now make us into agents of your grace. Make your presence known to others through our love, our compassion, our helping hands. Speak your creating story through our voices. And where darkness reigns and silence deafens, may your living words shine through. From Ukraine to Sudan and Syria to Korea, from the streets of Nigeria to the streets of Chicago, from the halls of Congress to the halls of our homes, let your voice ring out, telling a story of love so great that death cannot end it, a story of life for all people, a story of your presence in, with, and among your people. We seek you, O oh God not just your path, but you. Reveal yourself again in your church and in your world. Show your face and let your voice be heard. Take your church by the hand and lead us along your path, telling us your story again and again until we cannot help but tell it too. It is in you that we live and move and have our being, and so we listen for your heart until ours beats in time with yours. We are your people, Lord, your creation and your beloved. Make us into your body, loving, serving, and caring for the world. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, the living word, who taught us to pray together, our heavenly parent, our mother, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Thank you. 
Our story from scripture comes today from the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 22 to 39. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we await eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through our wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If God is for us, who can be against us? The stories we hear in scripture of our creator parent who loves us beyond measure, and the stories we sing of a God who colors outside the lines and beyond our understanding, our assurances of our worthiness, our forgiveness, of just how much we are loved. God's grace heals us so that we might have the comfort and courage to go forth, walking with Jesus and telling his stories as well as our own. Thanks. Be to God. We are never alone.
May they stir you to action and transformation. I arise today in the name of silence, womb of the word, in the name of stillness, home of belonging, in the name of the solitude of the soul and the earth. I arise today, blessed by all things, wings of breath, delight of eyes, wonder of whisper, intimacy of touch, eternity of soul, urgency of thought, miracle of health, embrace of God. May I live this day compassionate of heart, clear in word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, generous in love. 